Welcome to the Elite Automation YouTube channel. I'm Malachi Greb, CEO and engineer of Elite Automation. Today we're talking to you guys about skilled trades and how to transition from skilled trades into automation or some type of engineering or higher level career path. Maybe you're just bored and tired with your industrial trade position and this one's very targeted towards the mechanical side of things. Uh, we've already done a video on the electrical side of things and we'll probably do some other videos on different skilled trades as well. So the core people that we're really talking to is anybody who's already like turning a wrench. So somebody who's doing maybe a millwright or maybe somebody who's like a vehicle mechanic. Essentially if you're turning a wrench, right? And maybe you've been doing it for X period of time and you're kind of tired of it and you're looking to do something new. So that's why we're making this video because we get requested very frequently this same question. And the first thing I have to say to somebody is I think if you get into this industry, you'll love it. You'll, especially if you're working for a systems integrator, right? Uh, another transition that people think may be very difficult is going from uh, that type of position into maybe a maintenance type position. You should be able to get a position as maintenance very, very easily. It's a very sought after position for companies. People are struggling to fill those positions. And so just keep those things in mind that like, don't be discouraged and think because you've been doing mechanical engineering your entire life. Don't get be discouraged and just think because you've been turning wrenches that you don't have the ability to have a career in this industry because 101%, like if you want to go for maintenance alone, you hands, hands down, you have a job. You may need to do a little bit of research and there may be some positions that want an associate's degree or some certifications or something like that. But if you're skilled enough and you're willing to put yourself out there, somebody will eventually hire you. And I don't think it'll even be a hard task to get hired. Just... I would advise keeping your standards high and don't just select the first position that's offered to you because there are a lot of positions that, you know, even in today's age, want to offer $17 an hour to be a maintenance technician or something. So definitely uh, be careful and choose a proper type of job, a proper company to work for. And let's take this to the next step, the next phase, right? Because there are a lot of people that may also be maintenance individuals and they want to transition, right? This is another individual that we're trying to talk to. So maybe you're maintenance and now you're wanting to get into maybe a higher level position. Maybe you want to get involved in new projects, right? And I always advise people to go work for a systems integrator, which is a company like ours. So what do we do as a company? We build and design robotic cells from scratch. Generally, we buy the robots, a purchase item if you don't know, but then a lot of the other procurements around it, uh, we either machine them, custom machine the parts ourselves, or it's a purchase item, and we just we engineered the entire system. So it's all over the place as far as like what we actually do as a company, what we design and build versus what we purchase. And that offers a ton of different avenues and exposure to the individuals that are looking to have a career with a company like ours. So that, that means you might be working on you know, mounting a robot to, a, to a, a base plate. That means you may be aligning rails on a linear rail system. It could be anything, right? And you, you build these skill sets from turning wrenches, from you know, doing alignment of things, uh, these are all skills that highly transition, right? And so definitely big thing, turning a wrench, right? That That's a base level skill that is very important and a lot of people don't even know how to do these days, right? Secondly, you know how to align things, right? If you, you're good at doing like belt alignment, pulley alignment, things like that, uh, able to set chain for, for timing chains and stuff like that. You know, this is a little bit of the me more mechanical side of things. If you're a millwright and you can do, you know, grouting and, and, and you know, the anchoring of things to the ground and uh, doing alignment of things as you're anchoring them or, or like if you're setting conveyors, uh, there's a lot of like millwrights out there that, man, they can really bust some th stuff out and they could, you know, they can install a, you know, hundreds of feet of conveyor in, in, in days or maybe a week or something like that. And, and that's very, very impressive, right? That's actually a big thing that a lot of like systems integrator don't have in their own house, right? Uh, like, like for us, a lot of times we outsource to millwrights, right? Whenever we do a big install because we just don't have a lot of that work, right? We generally need, you know, one to four or five builders to, to build something, right? And whenever it comes to an install, maybe that same install, you need 10 guys to do the install portion because you have one week to do the install. And so we're at a minimum looking at hiring five people. Uh, and it also depends on all the other different workloads. Sometimes none of our five guys that we have 
go on site to do the install. They just stay back at the shop and work on the next project and we just outsource to the millwrights to do the install. Because a lot of times they've also you or they've also gained a lot of experience in uh, like setting equipment, rigging equipment, aligning equipment, right? And so if that's a position that you're you're already in, you you have these skill sets that could be very valuable to a systems integrator. You might be able to help them, help them manage uh, some of their installs that they do. So those are things to keep in mind that are highly valuable skill sets that you have that will convert. So whenever you do your interviewing process, you definitely need to acknowledge that you have these skill sets and these abilities to do these different things, right? And another thing to keep in mind too, like let's say for instance, you go to work for a manufacturer, okay? Be careful because even within a particular facility, there might be different divisions, right? Like uh, some people have like facility maintenance and then they'll have machinery maintenance, right? So facility maintenance is like changing out mouse traps, cleaning toilets, fixing toilets, whatever, right? And then the other one's like actually working on machinery, right? So just make sure the position that you're landing is the actual type of position you wanna be in and start just driving towards that career, right? A lot of times it's literally the shift of just getting a different job somewhere. It's not a, you have to go back to college, it's not a, you know, you need to get different certifications or go through all this training and blah, 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 blah. A lot of times it's literally a matter of just start applying for different jobs that you're interested in. Uh, working for a systems integrator, I think, is one of the best places to work for just because you get so much different diversity in the type of equipment you get to work with. You can also get into involved in things like fabrication if you're not already, more high tolerance measurements if you're not already, alignment stuff if you're not already. So just like keep keep these things in mind that like if you're really trying to grow your skill sets and you're bored with what you're doing and these are the reasons why you're wanting to make these career shifts that that you're choosing that job that's gonna give you that ability, right? Going into the training side of things, right? Unless you're one to shift all the way to like a mechanical engineer, you don't necessarily need to go to college. And there's also some systems integrator, some jobs out there that will allow you to learn mechanical engineering without having to go get a degree. And uh, we're definitely a company like that, right? If we have one of our guys on our shop floor who's building machines for us and he's saying, hey, look, on my free time, I'm doing, on my free time, I'm learning mechanical engineering and watching YouTube videos and this and this and that. If you have a small little something, can I try to do the mechanical engineering on that? So sure, we'll win a small little project and we'll say, hey, do, you know, go ahead and work on the mechanical engineering on this. Sit with our, uh, our one of our main mechanical engineers, one of our more senior mechanical engineers, and then they can uh, sit with them and learn from them. And, and that's just an opportunity that you have to ensure that you're gonna get whenever it comes to working for a new employer. So if you do wanna become a mechanical engineer, the, the fact of the matter is you're probably gonna have to go for an engineering degree, a mechanical engineering degree. And you know, I'm not very much of a degree individual. I think you can learn so much more off of YouTube so much quicker. And you know, a lot of the things are either not practical to a software that you're actually gonna use, or you're using six different softwares and then you go to work for a, a job and, and not one of the six softwares that that you used were one of the ones you need for the job. Or you worked on a software for like six weeks and your employer wants somebody with much more experience than that, right? If you do go the college path, 101% get you the software, right? For like $60 a month, you can get some of the AutoCAD softwares out there now like Fusion 360 or Inventor or SolidWorks. Uh, and I would definitely suggest like SolidWorks or Inventor. And I highly, highly promote always use the tools, use the softwares, use the things they are actually gonna use on the real world, right? Watch YouTube videos on it. Be experienced in the practical things when you graduate from your college degree or if you're looking to do a career shift, right? If you wanna shift hard from like a millwright to a mechanical engineer and you wanna go right into it and you don't wanna go for a degree, watch YouTube videos, right? You are gonna be limited in, the, in some of the employers that will employ you because they want that engineering degree, right? But uh, for the individuals who don't care as much, right? If you was able, able to come to me in a job interview, you said, watch this, boom, ba -da 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 -da. You, and then you design some wicked piece of something, right? Some conveyor system or some, whatever it may be, right? Uh, but if you design a really cool, intricate piece of design and you can do that right in front of somebody, say, here, let me show you 15 minutes, blah, 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 right? People are gonna be impressed by that, right? I, I'm impressed by execution. I'm impressed by people can get things done. Show me they can get things done. So you can do that by just staying in your current job, maybe doing a career shift and, and getting something a little bit more in alignment and just watch YouTube videos, get the software and play around in the software, right? And, and gain a lot of experience through that. The next option is you can get an associate's degree, right? That's not gonna land you an engineering job because a lot of those are, are expecting the engineering degree, right? They want the engineering and the title of that degree. They want that four-year degree. But an associate's degree will give you a leverage. It will give you the ability to get in some doors because maybe some other 
uh, companies don't want to give you an opportunity unless you have a two-year degree at least. Just some companies are like that, and that's something you just have to be conscientious of, that every company's different, especially when you get into larger companies. The more large the company is, the more likely they're gonna have higher contingencies unless they don't pay well, or they have some other thing that you really don't wanna deal with, right? So I definitely do think that the degree in the long term ends up being the best potential for success, but also the same individual without the degree can still earn the same amount. They just gotta work harder. There's gonna be less opportunities, right? Maybe the person with the degree has 10 job opportunities, whereas the guy without the degree has five job opportunities, right? Maybe they all still pay the same. Maybe, you know, two of the five that they got were not as well paying, but three of them were well paying. So just keep that in mind that these things will have an impact on, on maybe how hard you have to search for a job. But also like if you're not the individual to search to shift jobs a lot, find a good job, find a good employer, and maybe you can work for that employer for the next five, 10, 20 years, the rest of your life, I don't know, right? But you know that's why, that's why the degree to me is not as important. If you can just sell yourself, sell your services, sell who you are and your capabilities, that you're gonna get a lot more opportunities that way than even more than when you will them with a degree. Uh, like I said, it's just gonna limit you in some ways. I wanna give a little bit more description on some of the, the things that you may get involved in uh, while doing these type of systems. So like I said, there may be fabrication, maybe something that you get into. So maybe you have to build like frames for it. Tom, shh. Maybe you have to build like frames or uh, pedestals for robots, or maybe you have to put up fencing, anchor fencing to the ground. You have to fasten robot tooling to the robot tooling. You have to fasten robot tooling to the, the robot head. You have to assemble that robot tooling, right? That's actually one of the cooler, more intricate parts of what you'll be doing is designing or is uh, assembling the robot toolings. I think that's an interesting thing. I haven't done a, a ton of assembly work myself. Uh, don't get me wrong, I've built my fair share of robot toolings, but also I haven't done a lot of it as well. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say for generic terms, a bucket, random parts and nuts and bolts and fasteners, right? And just, and put it all together and get to see this really cool, unique, special, special customized piece of tooling. And to me, that's one thing I love about this job and this career path is just like, we're always building something new. We're always doing something different. And I just love that about this job. So maybe that's something that you can find interesting about it as well. Maybe that's why you want to shift into this career path. And also different systems integrators are different as well. So like I mentioned something about like robot pedestals, you might be mounting robots to a pedestal. Uh, some integrators don't even do robots. They literally just do like mechanical machinery. I just did a video on Pack Expo, an event we just went to, and they're a very machine-based uh, expo that we went to. And a lot of those integrators there are, not even really integrators, they're actually like machine builders, right? That's another term for what we do, machine builder. But they're building like true machines, right? It's all mechanical like fixturing and just like, I don't even know the word for it. Like they're just highly mechanically engineered systems with a, a lot of machine components. Very intricate, very interesting. And uh, somebody's got to assemble these things, right? Somebody's got to put these things together. Somebody's got to test them out after they work, after they're up and running and, and, and do trials on them. And whenever something doesn't work, they have to do the modification uh, to it. And this could also dive you into different things. And this could also lead you into different uh, career paths as well. Maybe you get involved in machining and, and, and whatnot. And uh, that's a whole nother you know, side of things. But like if you're working for like somebody like a systems integrator and they have an embedded machine shop, that it, and it may be a career path you want to do, right? Machining can be a, a very good career. And all these things work well together, right? So if you're a machinist, if you're you know a mechanical assembler, if you're a mechanical engineer, all these things work really, really well together. And it's great to not have just one and to have multiple of these skill sets and disciplines because they really help out in uh, being able to have a well-rounded skill set, right? There's a lot of mechanical engineers that have never been on shop floor and it creates some major, major issues with, with the designs coming out appropriately. So just keep that in mind. If there's anything else that you'd like, put it down in the comments below. Uh, any other questions, any other things that you think that I missed out, if you, if you went through this process, if you're familiar with all the different uh, facets of, of mechanical assembly, mechanical engineering, uh, and you've experienced some of the stuff, put it in the comments below. Hit the subscribe button because we're going to be producing all different types of automation, manufacturing content. Uh, we have our podcast, all kinds of cool things. Uh, so make sure uh, to follow us and, and see what we have coming up next. Catch you on the next one. Peace.